absolutely radical. Now, if you're trapped where you calculate the structure has a geometry, we know we plug that into the strange function calculation, and, and we know what we're doing. And that's, been, that's a big relief after several years of, of not knowing what we're doing. So, what are we trying to do now? We're trying to uh, transport the atoms into the center of the unit cell. If we are trapped here now, this is the waveguide coming out of the page at you. And if we move the atom to here, the gamma will be able to go up by five. So how are we going to do that? So the gamma will be go from one to five. This is a frame from a movie that John Hood made, which says if you're trapped here in, in the trap I just showed you, and now you turn on a guided mode. It's got two guided modes, one of them is red, one of blue. You can perform this trap AD back and just suck and move the outer structure stays with it. So that's what we're trying to do now. We're going to be concerned about it, at least in that matter. Okay, let's see. Uh, 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 let and so we want to do that. You'll hear again uh, more about that in the talk at the end of the day. To do, find out what's happening when our atoms go into the band gap. The band gap, well, we can't see the spectrum. So this is just the device profile here. And it is oscillating this is last resonance. And so we took measurements there. This is a TM mode. So we built structures where we can efficiently propagate T and TM out of structure. And these are just, this is wiggles of just parasitic reflections to the PM mode that knows nothing about it. Anymore. So now we can make a measurement here and ask, okay, what's well, the PM thing? That's the one that knows about all this uh, bandage. We can make measurements like that. This is now not on the cavity rest, it's a dispersion shift for the atom. Uh, and uh, that's what the TM mode means, the reasonable signal for a couple of atoms. And what is the T, you know, and what is the TM, which doesn't know anything about the band edge, it looks like that. And if you overlay those, then you get a graph like that. So the plan is, okay, from here we can extract the gamma 1 beam, which is supposed to go to zero when we go to band edge. We can extract the frequency shift, which is not supposed to go to zero, that's just going to be atom atom. That's all shifts. As we go through, and we've got this TM mode as our calibrator that we can see in the So we, we have a plan. Uh, so back to this, uh, what are we trying to do uh, more te in technical terms? Getting into the band gap now as this kind of Hamiltonian I've described. And there's nice physics. The way we tune into the gap is just like cesium the pump. It makes the structure a little bit thicker, shifts the band edge and moves the bandage down from season to the gap. So it would be nice to have a knob to do that. So how do you have a knob which goes from you know this regime this back, goes from this regime to that regime? Uh, it would be nice if I could turn it. It would also be nice if you could turn it in Microsoft. And so we've been working on that. That's led by uh Sutin. This is the alligator, and the, and the idea is just grab it on either side and pull it apart. And if you change the gap, the band structure, the band gap stays about the same as the band is. And so that's the structure that the thing has made. This is its functional thing. This is all suspended on the alligator, and this is fixed to you know, uh, the other earth. And so you apply voltage to the thing. And the proof of that is just apply a voltage plot versus the square, that is just electrostatic. So we can move over a large range, uh, a couple of nanometers. We, we can now localize the device band edge relative to cesium to a few parts of the, like uh, three ten minus two. And then we tune it uh, to, I don't know, part ten. Anyway, so this will be nice in terms of dynamically tuning. We'll look at dynamics where it's dissipated for, for, uh, for a Hamiltonian and tuning. The other thing we've been working on are cavities. So this is called fishbone cavities. So this is the brain of the alligator. 
take the reflector here. And so this is just with a single nano beam, this cavity. And uh, you measure transmission, uh, the reflection, you get these really narrow lines, you take the ratio, you get the cavity here, we measure the quality factor of the medium. Um, so we're getting pretty good at that. That means the loss of the link, this is now a single beam, but we want to build alligators of this. So just a single beam, we've got the process control down, but we have uh, a few parts of minus four and 100 microns. That's the length of our alligators. The propagation loss is just not really part of the uh, Let me quickly just remind you of a recent paper that's uh, by Alejandro Bencudla and Chin Long. Uh, which I think is really important in terms of extending all these ideas to, to real two-dimensional structures. We have band gaps, band structure, we have band gaps. We've designed it so we can trap and we can do physics, or strong interaction in the band edge, and has applications to quantum magnetism, both in and out of the gap. Uh, we think we can do topological stuff. Uh, we have a manuscript we're preparing about that. But essentially, we realize any uh, function can have a uh, the basic idea, I'll just run over, is, you know, this is the cartoon, but we've really designed how you track this. The lambda system, so you go up and you go down, so this is the exciting ground space. The guided modes interact here. Um, and so you get a spin spin Hamiltonian of your favorite flavor, or we can spin these coefficients, both the magnitude and the functional form. Uh, the interesting thing is how big is it? A vessel function looks like a log, it looks like, you know, what do you want? Um, if you have some money, we'll make what you want. Um, and this thing, how big is it? Well, it depends on stuff about the device. So depending on the band curvature, um, how flat the bands are, the rate gets up, the higher and higher and higher the bands get flatter. And so for the device that we designed, which is completely reasonable to build, it's fairly conservative, we think we can make this gamma 2D, which is a 2D analog, and it's 1D, we can make that 30 megahertz. So smaller, uh, uh, we can make flatter curvature, uh, then we can do better. Um, here. So putting all that together, we want to do spin-spin physics. How, how, long, how long can we do spin-spin physics before we, we make a mistake? We just made a mistake. This is the number of coherent cycles. And you can see in the device we designed, if you put the atoms in the trap site, we already take gamma 1D down, gamma prime, the loss number 0.4, and we can do tens of cycles. Not very good. If we're able to improve, we've got 10 to the 6 per cubes, we've got 10 to the 7, that's in the literature, uh, 10 to the 8 is kind of heroic, but we ought to be able to make this thing a lot better and make flatter bands. Uh, Chin Lung Hung has already designed a 1D structure where that's, that's so we hope in following Peter Lodel, the talk he showed, that we can get this well down to 4.1, then, then we can do hundreds of problems. If we make really flat bands by looking at topological properties of the uh, uh, photonic crystals, then if we can get this down another factor of 10, then we're doing 10,000. And then it's just a change in the future, I think, with uh, the spin spin. Okay, uh, just quickly, here's a photonic crystal, and if you look at Casimir Polder, it's big here and small here, big here and small here above these posts, and so you can do some modulation in Casimir Polder to make traps on really small scales. Why would you want to do that? Because conventional optical lattices live out here, for say those Hubbard physics. The rates you get in these lattices are really small. Uh, that's why it's so heroic. To very low temperature flow entropy. And if you go into one of these so-called vacuum lattices where the track for the link scale can go way below the, the, uh, the wavelength, then we think you can really push up. Okay, let me thank the whole group. Uh, thank you for your attention. We have one new student, and it's clear that he needs to be retrained as well. Uh, thanks.
authorization is a big deal, and uh, the, all the devices we've designed so far around the trap site have a, a, a dominant linear polarization for both the trap and the it, it, it's linear polarizing the trap site and the guided. And then uh, what you'd like to do, so that's nice, so we don't want, we don't, uh, in atomic physics you have any ellipticity that you're good for.